Welcome everyone, we are live. My name is Nikki Lopez and you're watching The Circle where every Tuesday, 8.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm talking to artists, uh, creatives, social entrepreneurs, people doing great things in the world today. And today we have a very special guest and friend, artist Cheryl Brown. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, absolutely. And so before we dig in, I just want to take a quick moment um, for many of you that are connected to me on social media and say thank you. Last night we had my family and I had a huge scare. I have a sister who's 21, uh, medical needs, uh, Down syndrome, and she went missing for several hours. And just the outpouring of support and people saying, we're coming to help search for her and the good vibes and prayers. And I just want to put it out, thank you know, out there. She's home safe, um, unbothered by it all. And I just want to thank everyone for the love and support and um, in 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 that time of need. So I appreciate that so much. So jumping in, we have Cheryl Brown. Mm -hmm. Cheryl Brown is a ceramic artist. She's the founder and director of Art Start, and she's also the owner of Cielo Clay Works Studio. Cielo. Cielo, okay. Cielo. Cielo, Cielo Clayworks. Clayworks Studio. So thank you. Thank you for joining, joining us tonight. Well, I'm really happy to be here. I know we've tried to do this for a while. <laughs> yes, yes. And we go, we've met a couple years ago. We were both in the um, Sistrung Artist for Residency program. And so we've been kind of, you've been in one of my um, shows, was it um, 2018? Yes. Yeah art show so um thank you and i'm glad to have you on today so so yeah so jumping in um where did your creative journey start so you know i really think my creative journey started when i was growing up and i grew up in a family of do-it-yourselfers so I always was doing something with my hands. And um, I think that that led me further down the line to get so passionate about clay. I didn't really do you know, too much art in my, my basic school, but uh, in my upper level studies, once I got into to college, I, I started focusing on art more and um, then I, I guess back in back in about 1979, a long time ago, um, I started exploring clay. I had I had graduated already uh, from the University of Missouri with a, a degree in interior design, and I just got the bug. And from the moment I stepped into that clay studio and started experimenting, that was it. So. I've been 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 having my hands in the clay for a long time. Wow. What was it about clay compared to other mediums that, you know, um, that just drew you in? Yeah, so I, I ha I've painted, I've drawn, I've done all of those things. Um, but what I really like about clay is the three-dimensionality of it and the plasticity that uh, when I'm building something, I, I mostly hand build. Uh, so when I'm building something out of the clay, I have to interact with it almost as if it's another being. And mm. sometimes I work very large and it almost becomes like a, a dance or a ritual as to, you know, work your way around the piece, doing whatever it is with your hands or we use paddles to, to create different types of shapes. And so I, I think that I think it was the 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 interaction with this 3D medium. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, um, so, and how, it, so, and you're still with clay, do you ever go into any other mediums or is pretty much clay is where it's at? Well, um, you know, I did take a long time off when I raised family. And then when I got back into my studio, when I moved into Art Tracks in Fat Village, that was, was over six years ago. 
I, I had been away from it for a while and I, I really felt like I needed to put my attention there. But um, yeah, I do other things. And, um, you know, it, later we might look at some of these photographs from an installation I did. And when I exhibited that installation, while I was creating the installation, actually, the Towers of Vulnerability, I was um, experimenting with some printmaking at IS projects. And so I was I was working in both things at the same time. And both mediums were feeding off of each other. So that was quite nice. Nice. That's nice. And then we I just take a You know, I, I, I kind of held myself back and really put, you know, got busy with the clay. That's awesome. And we just have um, to take a moment to get some comments. So we're live on a few places. We're on Facebook under Nikki Lopez Creative. Outclick Magazine. We're also live on YouTube and Periscope. And so we have a couple of comments. Oh, we have Valerie. Oh, yes. You know, I um, showing some concern for what I said earlier. I'll definitely um, hit you back up later. <laughs> uh, we have Jean. Blessings to you and your family. Oh, thank you. And she's also saying hello to Cheryl. Jean is also an artist. Hey. Yes. Um, we also have Sylvia Ames. Good evening um, to Nikki and guest show Brown. So oh, hello, Sylvia. So yes, if you're watching live, please consider sharing this uh, live with your, uh, your folks, you know, tag people in this. It's going to be an interesting conversation and many people would want to be inspired by this conversation. So um, can you talk a little bit about your work? Like, um, you, you know, whether um, maybe share some of your practice or some of the focus that's in your work? Sure. Um, you know, the, la the last large piece I did, which I consider, consider a concept work, was the Towers of Vulnerability installation that I spoke about. And it was, a, it was uh, an installation of 10 pieces of which uh, they were about well, maybe about 20 inches to, to 26 inches tall. And in general, my work often speaks about what we as humans have in common. And I kind of like to dwell on our commonalities rather than our differences, because I think we, no matter where we live, what country we're in, what our background is, I think we do have a lot of, of things that we share in common. Um, so that and a lot of my earlier work was inspired by ritual and ceremony. I've traveled a lot, I've lived in foreign countries. So seeing all these different cultures has helped push me in this direction. And uh, the towers, they, they speak to what humankind has in common and they reveal the vulnerabilities of human beings and of our society, just how vulnerable we are. Um, it, the idea originated out of uh, my my exploration of the soul. And I mean, when I did the What's Your Elephant, I exhibited my soul houses. And these pieces, um, they reflect upon what we as individuals go through our passages in life. And each of the towers has a unique set of passageways and what I call windows. And those uh, represent where different things come into our life and they flow in and they flow back out. And some of the things we keep and some of the things we let go of. But uh, they all, all of those passages have a, a very distinctive impact on both the individual and humankind. And also uh, you'll notice that they spiral upwards. So um, that, that, that power that, you know, I build, I build in what I call uh, slab coils. And it's a technique that I, I'm sure other people must do it, but I feel like I perfected it for myself. <laughs> And so there's a lot of spiraling going on, and um, that represents the hope and prosperity for for our future. Uh, so well, let me just pull up since we have a couple of questions here. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, so this is we're on the Facebook. We have a couple of pictures to share with you. So Katie, I, I know you talked a little bit about this, but can you talk a little bit about this one in particular? Um, yeah. So. Um, 
what I explained about this is the, the towers of uh, vulnerability installation and what I explained just now, that's, that's what it's about. Um, but I built them both in white earthenware as well as red terracotta, which is an earthenware body. So the ones that are darker, you can see that are darker, those are the ones built with the red clay. And the light and the dark plays off of the dualities that we face as human beings uh, every day of our life. And that uh, the, uh, I feel I was portraying vulnerability by the fact that they, they weave you know, they're not just a straight up and down tower, but they kind of have a lot of movement to them. And, and you know, if, if you move to the, maybe not the next one, but the third one, you might be able to see, well, you can wow. kind of see, go back to the other one, I'm sorry. Sure. You can kind of see um, where there's little doors and windows. You don't see the passages so much. But this is where some of the things that we experience come into us and um, and help make us who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, also, just a, a technical point is that all of the glazes I create in my studio. So um, I really love that part of ceramics as well, of exploring different glazes and, and what, what I can do with them. And uh, I was really happy the way these glazes came out. Absolutely. And we have one here. I love the colors. It's just so vibrant in all the different so layers. Vibrant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the uh, the red terracotta one, yeah, the one right on front and the right, and mm -hmm. down at the bottom, there's a little uh, protrusion uh, onto mm -hmm. the right-hand side. I'm sorry. Yeah, the right hand side. That's actually one of the passageways. If you would see the other side of it, you could see that you could. It, it actually has a little opening where where you could go in, where things can go in. Just representing those passages of life again. Wow! And we have a couple of comments. So we have uh, G says greetings. We have another artist, Deborah Kerr. Hello, listening from Asheville, North Carolina. Hello, Nikki and Cheryl. Hey, thank um, <laughs> We also have Jean saying, towers feel like a power image and vulnerability are all about, are about our softness. Yes, yes. Dualities, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> What's something that you want the viewer to take away when they see one of your pieces? Well, you know, this isn't the only work I do. Um, I also uh, have a production line that I created uh, that's that's got a very ethnic feel to it. Um, and, it, you know, it, even that work, it plays back a lot to the spiral. Um, I, I, took a lot of that from um, the old cultures of the world. So I, I would say, what would I want somebody to take away if they see this? You know, it's it's hard for me to say what experience a viewer would have. Uh, that's kind of not my job. But mm -hmm. um, I, I hope that they do feel when they look at this. And when, when you're really there in person, uh, they do look somewhat fragile although yes a tower is strong and um and and a lot of people got that feeling that that they they got that vulnerability without me even explaining so mm. i had a lot of comments oh they look like dr seuss things oh, you know but but yeah that's where i'm coming from awesome awesome these are beautiful works and then we have here because i know um if you want to see more of Cheryl's work, you could go to, you have, um, what was your site? You have a, a Facebook page, right? You have Facebook. Yeah, and you have Facebook and Instagram are both at CLO Clayworks. Okay. So I I'm believe going it's at CLO Clayworks. Awesome. So I'm just going to put that in the ticker. So if you want to find it, you have CLO yeah, Clayworks right there. 
<laughs> and so you have the Cielo uh, Claywork Studio. What type of work do you like offer classes or services? Like, what do you do? Outside? Yes. Okay. Actually, Cielo Claywork's is a multidimensional studio. It's where I work. It's where I teach. I have classes. I am conducting classes right now. They're one-on-one -on -one and we follow all the protocols with PPE. And, um, you know, that's something people can book. Um, I have at my Facebook page listed, but I, I, do, the, I do have a wheel class but my forte is hand building so i do hand building classes and there's a couple of fun little things there's a, a create a plate class which you can do in one sitting and basically i fire it and you come pick it up and um and i i was doing in the public a project called paint a stein which is basically just about glazing it's just a fun evening and so i i am doing that as well in my studio and I would take up to two people to do that. So it's all about just glazing and having a good time. Paintings, you can choose a, can choose a stein, a mug, a flower pot, ornaments, what, what those are the main things I have. So, um, but yeah, and, and I also provide firing services. So if people that might be looking to get something fired, I do that as well. I think that's awesome because, you know, there's a, a lot of artists that may have studios, but, they, you know, to have that kiln there, that's like a, huge, a whole nother level. So it's great that, you know, they could just do their clay and bring yeah, it there. I, mean, I have the kiln and I have a slab roller and I have an extruder and I have my wheel. So I have all the main pieces of equipment that anybody would need to explore. Mm -hmm. the, the field, you know, ceramics and whatever they like. Awesome. And then also, and by the way, Cielo Clay Works. Sorry, I was going to say Cielo Clay Works is located in that village in Art Tracks uh, Studios and Gallery. Just, just so yes. people know. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's uh, in uh, downtown Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So um, if you're in the area, definitely go and check that out. So um, I, I'm wondering when would uh, like the art walks and all those start up back again? Uh. Yeah, I have no idea. But you know, I, I it won't happen until it's safe, and yeah. we miss them. But, but it it's we get hundreds of people through there, and it's just not something that's safe right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that uh, we get it. We get an opportunity to value small, small groups, <laughs> intimate spaces. Yeah, and that's why <laughs> yeah. that's why I'm offering things at my studio because, you know, I still go there. Some of the other artists do too, and people are looking for something to do different. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are out more than they used to be, but you know, a place where they can go and feel safe and be creative. Yes, awesome. And I also want to mention that Cheryl is one of the artists um, that is a part of the IA Arts Project that I'm doing, working with the Housing Authority of the City of Fort Lauderdale. So um, they're building affordable housing for elders, and there they were. Um, there's a mixture of commission art and workshops and virtual chats where we still have a few more to go, as well as a call for artists where artists submitted work. So we're still working on that. Can you talk a little, I know we still have some things to um, iron out, out <laughs> your piece, but can you talk a little bit about uh, the concept of the piece that you're making or you're gonna be sure. with or the associate in the workshop? So yes, um, I was really excited when um, when Nikki contacted me and asked if I'd be a part of the project. And you know, we've we've gone back and forth a little bit on on where we're going. But no matter who we end up doing it with, the project that I'm going to create is uh, I wouldn't call it exactly a mural, but it is a large scale uh, wall piece that spans about. Um, I think it's like five feet by seven feet, something like that, maybe a little more, but it's gonna be comprised of tiles that have been um, painted with underglazes and have will be carved and incised. It's called scraffito actually. And we, I'd like to do that with a group of people with, to be determined. 
but uh, each person who would be working on their tile would be doing something representative of their culture. So mm -hmm. it's a cultural, I call it a cultural quilt. So that in, for all intents and purposes, when it's done and it's hanging on the wall, it would kind of resemble a quilt in the layout with mm -hmm. blocks and pieces in between. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. I'm happy to have you a part in. You know, I'm so curious as to how, I know it'll be amazing, but it's just like, that's gonna be really an, uh, a nice piece. So, so yeah, so- and it will be spontaneous. Yes. <laughs> because people will be creating from themselves, so. Yes. So talk to us a little bit about your program, Art Start program. What is that if no one has ever heard about that? <laughs> well, I think a few people have, but um, back in 2015, I started working on the concept in 2014. I developed a program called Art Start Mentoring Emerging Teenage Artists. And it's a passion project. Um, I am supported in part by grants from the Broward County uh, Division of, of Cultural Division and the commissioners, actually. Um, it, and the program is a, um, it's a professional development program for emerging teenage artists who are on a career track to be artists. So it's not just for anyone, but it's for, it's for young youth who think at this point, they're like, that's what I wanna do. And they're, they are amazing artists. So they get workshops on how to create their artist documents. And we work really hard on that. I do some one-on-one -on -one mentoring with them as well to go over that process. They also uh, have a workshop in, um, how to put together their own art exhibit. And I bring local talent, local artists from Fort Lauderdale in to actually present those. So one of my presenters for, is Galen Todd Traxel and the uh, exhibit, creating your own exhibit is gonna be led by Lisa Rockford. Mm. And then there's also a day long workshop, which uh, is done by myself and uh, and Francisco Schott. We both are the co-curators of the Art Start exhibit. And we basically work with the kids that day. Of, they show the work they want to put in the show. And then they also read their bio and their artist document, their, their statement. And we, as well as the peers, because all their peers are there, um, sing succeed in representing what you're writing because that's an important connection to be able to make. So so basically the kids, they're learning um, a lot of things that many people don't learn until they get, they graduate or they're, they're out in the, in, the, in the career field. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very satisfying program. Uh, the kids, tend to like it, they enjoy it. They especially would get excited about exhibiting at Fat Village during Art Walk. And this year just presents a lot of new challenges. So right now we're starting everything virtually. And mm. um, we have to kind of wait and see about the exhibit. It's typically in January, but mm. uh, we could put it off for a while if we need to, but we'll wait and see. But I, it, it'll be interesting to do this as well virtually. Yes, yes, in, indeed. Uh, we have Sophie, um, uh, the curator for ArtServe. She's saying yes and giving some hand claps to, to that information. Um, she, she's done a lot for us. <laughs> yes. And we have G saying great work and great project. So awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. And I, you know, I just want to, if I could real quick, I just want to say that um, I have a long history of advocating for arts and education. Um, when my son was in school, he's in his thirties now, I uh, spent many, many, many hours working on programs for Broward Public Schools. Uh, some were art related and some were more outreach for multi, for, for underrepresented 
um, populations within the school. But I did a lot of that work through the national through the national, the state, <laughs> the county, and the local PTAs. And that gave me a real foundation. And I mean, I made my connection with Dillard High School doing that kind of work. And you were, you, I think you had asked or mentioned at one point uh, in another conversation, how can people get involved? And right now I'm running the program with the students in the uh, visual arts and the emerging computer technology uh, design programs. Uh, they're, they're taking, they're, they're the art start participants. We just kicked off the school uh, event last Friday. So again, it's all virtual. It'll be interesting to see. And um, a little, and in just a few more days, I'm going to do a public kickoff, which I typically would do at Art Walk. And, you know, we have an exhibit of alumni work and mm -hmm. uh, have some, uh, solo uh, exhibits going on as well. And uh, this year I'm gonna do it virtually. So I'm gonna kick off my annual fundraiser as well as having an alumni exhibit virtually uh, on Facebook and through my uh, newsletters. So th that, that's another new interesting thing to try, but I think it'll be fun. Nice, nice. yeah, absolutely. Um, we have uh, David saying good night. David Muir, a photographer, artist, and photographer. Yeah, I know David. Yes, <laughs> he said I look ten. This is this is uh, <laughs> women and work. And and how old do I look? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and we have Grecia um, uh, saying fantastic guest. Thank you, Nikki. By the way, when is Cheryl's studio opening to open to the public? Public. So I am, I'm t right now I'm doing classes on Thursdays and Fridays. I, I used to have different hours, but now I'm concentrating my time so that then the studio is empty for a while. But um, right now I am doing those classes and typically I do them from three in the afternoon till nine in the evening. Um, but I'm pretty flexible right now, you know, of when I could book something, but usually it's usually I wouldn't start until after lunchtime. And mm. it's, it's set up that way for people who go to school, people who work. So uh, it's a matter of contacting me um, and saying, Hey, I want to do this. And we work out, we work out a schedule that's convenient and each class is two hours. So mm. nice. And we have Jean said, so glad you're keeping it going even in difficult times. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am Jean. And I'm very excited too, because right now I have a guest artist working in my studio uh, who hasn't really worked in clay and um, exploring something that's new to me as well. So it's very exciting to have, have um, Tina Laporta there. We're doing printmaking on clay and just you know, trying a lot of things and having some successes along the way. Mm -hmm. I think this is a good time. You know, like there has been challenges, you know, shows are canceled, things are closed. Um, but then people are given that space and permission to kind of explore if they have the capacity and bandwidth, of course, to do so. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and when people come to my studio, I'm wearing a mask and I am wearing a shield because sometimes I have to get a little closer, but, but we also can be six feet apart the way the tables are set up. Um, and everyone comes in with a mask and everything gets cleaned and wiped down and, you know, before, after, in between. So that's we, awesome. we were, we're, we're going to keep it safe. <laughs> oh, David, I think he wants a free class or something. He says, Cheryl, you look ah. beautiful. Great personality. <laughs> That's because I said, and what, how old do I look? No. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, and then we have Michael. Love Cielo Ceramics. Ah, um, hi, yeah. hi, Michael. Yes. And Cheryl's Ceramic Class is an amazing family activity. Ah, that's that's nice to consider too, because people, you know, the, the not just adults. You have kids and people trying to figure out what to do with the family. That is, you know, something to think yeah. of. 
I have worked with as young as a, literally two years old, turned three before she came back to Glaze. She was with her family. She was a pleasure. And the oldest, I've worked with with a, a, a lovely lady who was like 83 or 84. So, you know, I, I can work with all ages. I, I have taught a lot with children, but also I've worked with, uh, with I want to say the elderly, but I'm in that category now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, you know, I've spanned the whole, the whole range and um, I, right now I am keeping a limit on how many people can be in the studio just to be safe. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the actual clay classes, if I'm doing it with adults, I, I really prefer just to be one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And um, there, like I said, there are some activities where if two people wanted to come, they could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we could do it safely. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have G. Well, I don't know. Okay. G's making a, a <laughs> PSA to ask everyone to vote. Yes. Yeah, so SFGN, South Florida Gay News, they do a best of every year. And I am nominated as one of the best um, artists in Fort Lauderdale. So the votes are open till the 8th. So absolutely, I'll put the link in the comment section. If you go to uh, SFGN, South Florida Gay News, there's quite a few um, talented artists. And I'm you know, just honored to be a part of that. So if you could log in and uh, give me a vote, that would oh. be great. Appreciate it. <laughs> yes, thanks for, thanks for mentioning that, G, absolutely. Um, and so, you know, speaking of the, the, like the shifts you had to make with your studio, like how was that for you? Um, I'm just kind of curious how each person or each artist kind of navigated the shifts with, you know, the pandemic and sheltering in and, you know, um, just your work in, in general. Well, I did not go back to my studio until June. I mm. just wasn't ready to. I went in every once in a while to do a couple of things, but um, but that's when I opened back up and I, I do have some other students who do an open studio with me and they were ready to come back. So we tried to figure out here, how can we do this safely? And I made a list of, this is what I'll do. This is what I expect you to do. And so far it's worked out really well. But mm -hmm. on my, for my own part, I took this time while I was sheltering in place to work on more of my social media. I, I was telling you that my website's still not up yet, but it's getting much closer. So I spent a lot of time on that, gathering things together, getting photographs. I did have someone come in and photograph some of my artwork. So I have, have nice, a lot of nice quality uh, photographs for the website and in general. So um, yeah, I just kind of decided to focus on that. And, and like everybody else, I focused on being here with my family, you know, and just trying to make it a safe place. Mm -hmm. then, I need, then I needed to go do something else. <laughs> so I opened yeah. my studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's great. You know, there's some people that are not in that position to do that. So the people that are, it's just really great to be able to do that and gives people an area to like go and focus and say, oh, okay, we could go there and do something. So I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward actually to hopefully taking one of your uh, ceramic classes, getting my hands. Yes, I think yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, how can people? Um, getting back to Art Start, um, how can I know you mentioned a fundraiser? How can people support it? You know, outside of you know the fundraiser event or um, uh, thing, how can people support Art Start? Well, um, so yeah, I do an annual drive. I actually just started that last year, and it was very successful. But I um, had mentioned that I have. Do it, I will put together an alumni show. So I, I have uh, an alumni collection of artwork and what how that came to be was at the end of each cycle when the students finish the cycle, there's no cost to the program whatsoever. You know, at, 
between what I bring in and, and the grant, uh, what the CIP grant from the cultural division helps me with, uh, keeps the program running. But one of the ways that people can help is I have the alumni, uh, the Art Start Alumni Gallery and all of those works are for sale. And they're, mm -hmm. they're a frame to work and they're for sale for reasonable prices. You know, and they're and they're beautiful pieces of art. These kids are super uh, uh, super talented, and they they do a great job. So I will be posting pictures of each of those pieces that are still available. And to date, to date, that gallery has raised about two thousand dollars for the program over you know over wow. three years or so. Since I've had it, so it's nice. And the pieces pieces go typically between seven five and one hundred and fifty dollars framed. Wow, one of them. that's really affordable. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, I uh, yeah, if anybody would ever want to try to contribute personally in some way, they can get in touch with me um, at at the Art Start program at Art Start, and um, from time to time, I look. I'm looking for presenters. I'm looking for people to help do some of the different things that uh, help that make the program a success. So uh, ArtServe is one of my collaborators, Sophie with uh, Dawn, and they, they've done a lot of different things for me over the years. Uh, we sometimes do our, our wrap-up session, which is an evaluation there. Um, they, she's had a couple of different exhibits, and she often welcomes work from the students into her exhibits as well. So those are all ways. And you know, find out more about it if you're interested, and pass the word that this and we're out, out there trying to um, not only not only I always tell the kids it's not only about coming to the workshops, it's not only about learning those things, but it's also up in the mentoring. So they're learning skills how to follow directions and how to pay attention to details and all these things are that are very important you know as they grow in their fields um mm -hmm. so uh you know it's it's um i it's, i i never fail to have participants and alumni come back to me and say thank you miss brown because you know, you worked with us so hard writing that artist statement or my bio, and I have used it over and over and over again, you know, or or uh, just the other really nice part of the program is it introduces them to what's available in the local community, who the artists are, who the organizations are, and how they can get involved with those organizations uh, so it helps expand their circle of knowledge and uh, support as well. So my one of the goals is to try and keep some of that talent here in Fort Lauderdale, even though a lot of them have gone to New York and done well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I think other places, you know. The, you know. Yeah, I think that's yeah. important. I love when that comes up in different conversations, how to uh, keep the talent in, you know, our local communities. Because so, a lot of times, you know, people grow and they're like, oh, I got to go to New York. I got to go to these things. And to, I love that you're, fo you know, what you're doing is kind of helping to have that focus that, you know, to keep that, you know, some of that work here. You know, of course, we wish people well, well when they travel, but, you know. Just have uh, Florida, South Florida, I mean, Broward County yeah. grow in yeah. the art. It's always great. And it is a symbiotic relationship. The, the, the goals of the program were not only just to help mentor and nurture these career tracked artists, but also to bring something more to our arts community and, and to introduce our cultural arts to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's the best way for people to reach you if they're trying to get in touch with you to buy a piece, to get to your studio, to get more information about Art Start? Uh, 
Okay, are we back? Yes. <laughs> so um, if somebody would like to get in touch with me regarding my work or anything to do with my studio, they can reach me at Cielo Clayworks at Gmail. works at gmail.com okay. and if you're interested in the art start program i would love to say it's art start at gmail but it's not um i i would i would uh <laughs> it's not i have another email address for that which i think i need to change up and it is actually my name so um bear with me it's cheryl dot dawn dot brown at gmail.com so it's my it's my name c h e r y l dot dawn like the sunrise d a w n dot brown at gmail dot com. But even if you sent me an email to Cielo Clayworks about Art Start, that would be fine too. <laughs> awesome, awesome. If you had access to a time machine, where would you go and why? Past or the future? Hmm, a time machine. You know, I'm really pretty content where I am now, and I work really hard to be present all of the time. But I think maybe I would like to see something in the future, far enough in the future, and I'm not specific, but far enough in the future that I won't be here anymore. But I think I would like to see something, you know, uh, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, uh, that just reflects on our culture and where it is at that point, as well as our as well as our artistic cultures. Um, also, to see how people in that time might reflect back on some of the things we're doing now, some of some of the some of the uh, major events that are going on in our lives right now, just how mm -hmm. in history that will present itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Big, but that's what I'm saying, and I'm sticking yeah. to it. <laughs> hey, hey, that's uh, it's always interesting um, uh, to hear different people's responses, and you know where would they go and why. So it's always a curiosity. <laughs> so absolutely. <laughs> So Cheryl, I want to thank you for joining us and being here tonight, sharing some of your amazing clay works and your programs um, with us tonight. And um, well, I want to. Yes. Yeah. No, I was just going to say thank you for having me here. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. And, you know, for the people who are online now, definitely um, thank you for being here. Thanks for the comments and questions and uh, sharing out this information. Someone wants to be inspired and you could actually be the one to um, bring that up. I see Jean is saying thank you both. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Jean. And Thanks also, we're gonna have, yes, we're going to have people that's gonna watch it on the replay. So I'm just gonna send out an early thank you to them. Uh, we have David saying, good show, absolutely. And so just to recap where you could find um, Cheryl Brown, you could go to facebook.com slash art start program. You could also find her on Instagram as well as, C as, well as Cielo Clay Works. So um, I'll put the, the links in the comments so you could get to that. Um, we also have Lovely Jones saying, awesome show. Thank you very much. And Michael, absolutely. Thank you all for being here. And so if you like this programming, this show is brought to you by Nikki Lopez Creative and What's Your Elephant? What's Your Elephant is a movement that uses the arts to create safe spaces and talk about anything unspoken. So if you want to find out more, you could go to whatsyourelephant.org. You could also go to link linktree slash Nikki Lopez 19 and you will see um, some more links of information and things that I'm up to and um, activities, all those things. Any final words for you, Cheryl? Final words. I just was reflecting as you were saying, Cielo Clayworks. Mm -hmm. if, if people wonder how that came about, why did I choose Cielo Clayworks? So um, 
I was in Colombia for some time. My husband is Colombian. And um, I, I was actually there it was when I met him uh, doing some work on my thesis. And everyone in the little village I was in had a very hard time saying Cheryl. So I became Cielo. And that's kind of stuck with me and you'll see it from time to time on some of my social media or my, my emails. And um, I decided I wanted to become Cielo Clayworks. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, nice. Um, we have David saying go vote too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Definitely yeah, go, go vote. Check out the link and go vote. That would help me out. I would really appreciate that. Um, you know, like I said, there's a bunch of wonderful artists, but you know, go vote for me. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so Cheryl, thank you again for being here and sharing your, um, your work with us. Um, thanks for everyone to be here. And my name is Nikki Lopez. I would see you all next week, Tuesday at 830. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night.